Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the invocations from a graphic design standpoint. I do work at a marketing firm. I actually own one where graphic design is half our team. And the previous agency I worked at also had about half the members be graphic designers. So we had anywhere between eight to 10 different graphic designers. And they teach you in graphic design school some basic 101 things to do, empty space, negative space, uh, kerning, typography, layout, as these are things that graphic designers should know how to do. And they are not subjective. A lot of times art can be subjective. So if we look at the artwork, we can say, I like it, I don't like it. And both people are correct. But for something like graphic design, there are certain styles and certain things that have to be done this way uh, because of real readability issues as well as how clean the image is. We make a lot of websites, we make a lot of mobile apps, and some of the mistakes that were made here, summarized in a Reddit post I'm gonna show you very soon, are not mistakes that should be made at this type of level, or if they are made, they should be caught. A graphic designer, a graphic designer will look at this very differently from a regular just Magic the Gathering player. A Magic the Gathering player with no graphic design experience might say, oh, well, you know, this is just flavor. Um, but at the end of the day, the it's unreadable, and it's unreadable by design. So it was, they had a objective, and I'm gonna show you a tweet. The objective was not to allow these to be read. They cannot be readable. And that to me is kind of strange for a card game, right? Where readability of the card game is one of the biggest reasons that it's not an eSport today. It's unclear what the cards do on the television screen. So having different versions of them, including a version which is designed to be unreadable, is not uh, the way to go. So anyway, I'm gonna get into the arguments um, against this. Um, some people like it, I don't like it because it breaks, it breaks the core fundamentals of what is considered good graphic design as of today. Now that was different 20 years ago and that was different 200 years ago. But there are certain principles that have stood the test of time. Now the argument that this is art and it is subjective, I'm gonna present that argument right now. So the argument is this is creative, it's out of the box and because it's creative and that's a different card frame, you shouldn't be hateful or disrespectful and you're acting stupid and you're also discrediting your opinion. Why would they want feedback of someone who explodes at something as simple and avoidable as this? Uh, the font is difficult to read, and it looks to me like the art is smaller than on most cards. The design here was a risk, and people got mad about the stupid bubble. Uh, and here's, here's where I kind of lose track. Yes, you can take creative, you can be creative, and I always tell my graphic designers, do something in your own style. And a lot of them have their own unique style, so you can tell that it's coming from them. Even on this channel, I'm sure that you know we have two main artists, and I'm sure you can decide which style is which style because they are significantly different. And I always encourage different styles, pushing the envelope, and really producing the highest quality product that can be produced, as well as being creative. Now, the response was, I can't explain this, I can't have a better response than this one. Um, art is subjective, but design has a lot of practice. There are a lot of books about good design. So the template is fully, in my opinion, design. It is not art. So let's go over these topics. The text is badly kerned. The aesthetics make it far from readable. And in fact, as I'm gonna show later, the whole point was for the card not to be readable. It sounds absurd, right? But that was the point. The alignment is arbitrary 
and it doesn't draw the eye to the right place. I do agree it is arbitrary. Um, you might disagree with the second point. It disregards the entire previous body of work. And this is a very big key. It does not look like a magic card. The Kaladesh inventions look like magic cards. The other masterpieces, the expeditions, look like magic cards. This does not look like a magic card. The color palette is busy. The font is incredibly hard to read. Lots of white space. And then the lack of white space. The small frame is not great. And the art is very, there's very little sp space. The spacing is incorrect. And there are some things that you can argue and you can say, oh, it's subjective, it's not subjective. But now I'm going to present you the flip side of why this is the way it is. He was asked the question, are the unreadable titles a feature or a bug? Serious question. Aaron, the I don't know what he is in Magic Gathering, but he's a official representative. Goal was that it didn't look like English on the first read. It appears that we succeeded. So they're very happy in their opinions, as his another response will show, he has done a good job. They hit their goal of not making it readable, of having really bad design. Design is this way. You you can have clients and they can want different stuff. And client every client's unique. Every client wants something different because they are different. But there are certain main points, good kerning, typography, good typography, spacing, readability. These things don't go away subjectively. These are what you go to graphic design and learn four years of school. So I wouldn't question one of my graphic designers of, you know, why did you choose to do this illustration? Why did you choose to do something like this? But I would question them if the kerning is incorrect or it's not readable. Like everything is on mobile devices today, so everything has to be readable. And surprisingly, your mobile device, a lot of them are bigger than Magic Cards, but mine is the SE, so it's about the same size as a Magic Card. And if it's not readable, that's, that's horrendous. Um, that is very, very poor. So let me repeat this. The goal, the goal of Magic the Gathering, Wizard of the Coast, was make sure the card was unreadable upon first glance. That, that was the goal. Um, so how on earth is this a good goal uh, to look like hieroglyphs? It couldn't clearly be English. But there is English in them. So it would be pretty cool if they hired a, you know, a person who was a linguistic and they could do higher, I don't know if those people exist. I, I assume that there's not that many of them and they could translate them so they can translate cryptic command into like cryptic and hieroglyphs and then command and symbols. And that would make a lot of sense to me, but no, they didn't do that. They used what I believe is fake symbols made the, the word cryptic command into like a fake symbol language and then used other fake symbols. So yes, it would be pretty cool if the uh, if cryptic command was in symbols, the whole thing was in symbols, but it's not cool to have it in bad text and then also have fake symbols. And I know I'm pretty sure they're fake symbols because there's some in front of the word and there's some in behind the word and something like, Avon Mind Sensor doesn't have that many symbols, but Cryptic Command has a lot. It depends on the spacing, right? So if it's uh, a word that isn't very long, they have a lot of symbols, it's just as filler, pretty much. So I'm pretty sure they didn't hire a special person to come in and translate it into Egyptian language, which would be amazing. That would be really, um, that would be what makes a masterpiece a masterpiece, right? Like they spent money, they spent money on it, you know, hiring this expert, which I don't think they did. I mean, I could be wrong, but just the way that the words are put in the middle of the symbols, uh, that's doesn't, if they did hire an expert, it's even worse than I would have ever expected them to think would be good design. So my argument here is very simple. There are certain design components that you learn in design school that everyone just knows. 
and this violates some of those components. Now, the art looks great. The foil, I, I saw the gif of it in the video. The foil looks amazing, but just simple. You don't need to be a graphic designer to realize there is something wrong with this. But you also, you do need to be a graphic designer to say, okay, it's a kerning, it's a typography, it's a font, it's a readability, it's a space. It has a lot of issues where if you had one of, or two of these issues, maybe the non-graphic designer wouldn't really care that much, but when you com compound them into you know, a masterpiece, this premium product, then you get a situation where it is, I do scratch my head and say, why would they possibly make, why, what, how did they believe this was a good concept? I mean, I mean, how did they get to this conclusion that they should make masterpieces like this? Uh, and it's because we know this is a conclusion because they admitted that the main objective, the goal which they met was to make the card unreadable. I mean, that was the goal. Anyway, that's it guys, bye.